folks. So what we're gonna do today is have some fun making bread. Um, I'm going to show you a recipe that I've been working on for many years that are that is trying to emulate uh, bread that I grew up with in the little town that I grew up in. Um, it's super easy. It's probably closest to what you might sometimes refer to as a ciabatta. Uh, it's a really versatile dough. You can use it as a bread. You could use it as a focaccia for like making a, a pizza. All kinds of things. It's, re it's really great. Um, if you're an experienced bread maker already, you could just look at the recipe and just kind of move on along. If this is the first time that you are trying this or you're trying to get better, then the steps are going to help you a little bit uh, working through it. I've been working on this for about 20 years. I started baking bread maybe uh, 20, 25 years ago. And uh, I learned that just reading the recipes just wasn't enough to actually get the texture and the flavor that, that I was really looking for. And so I'm gonna show you a little bit of the tricks and tips that I picked up along the way. And uh, hopefully it'll make uh, your uh, learning curve a little less steep than, uh, than mine was. All right, let's have some fun. First thing, get your apron on. If you're not uh, used to this, you can get a lot of uh, goo all over you really quickly. All right? All right, my friends, by popular demand, I think that means two people, um, I'm gonna show you how I make one of the breads that I've grown very fond of over the years. This is trying to emulate some of the bread that I grew up eating in the town that I grew up in, in Italy. And the nice part about this bread is that it's very forgiving, uh, but it's a little hard to handle. Uh, it has what we refer to as a high hydration rate. It has a lot of water to flour, which makes it a little scary uh, to work with, but you're gonna really love what comes out at the end. To get started, you need to pull together a little bit of equipment. Um, if you're gonna invest in anything and you wanna get better at bread making, you cannot skimp on this. You really should get a digital scale. They come in all shapes and sizes. They're really inexpensive. You can find ones that are as cheap as $20 on Amazon. Um, this one here maybe was a little more because it goes up to five kilos. Get one that goes at least up to one kilo in one gram increments. This is going to make all the difference between kind of sort of getting there with bread and really uh, perfecting your skills. And other than that, you probably have most of these things available around the house already. Uh, this is called a dough scraper, a bench scraper, and there's also a plastic version like this. If you don't have one, uh, you can cut the lid of a, uh, of a yogurt container uh, off like this into a little semicircle shape. It's gonna be very handy when you're scraping the dough either on the counter or in a bowl. Uh, a simple bowl like this, it doesn't have to be stainless steel, it could be, it could be anything and a measuring spoon with, uh, you know, of, of any kind. If you don't have a digital scale, you can probably still approximate what we're going to do today. Just Google my, the quantities that I'm going to give you uh, in the recipe and, uh, and try to approximate it with like a cup or a half cup uh, measuring uh, container. The other thing that you're gonna need for today's uh, recipe is commercial uh, starter. This is like that granulated instant uh, yeast that looks something like this. Brenda, can you, sh can you help me here? Yeah. Can you just tell me if I've got, if I'm in the frame? Yeah. You know, it looks something like this, that granulated, that granulated stuff, you know. Um, it's cheap, I buy it in bulk. Store it in the freezer uh, when you're done. If you make bread a lot, um, you know, and you buy it in large quantities, this is gonna, uh, this is gonna allow it to stick around for months. I think I've had mine for years, actually, uh, in the freezer. You're gonna want, for this recipe, you're gonna want some bread flour. Uh, this is one of my favorite kinds. You can find it in just about any uh, grocery store, King Arthur uh, flour, but really, you could use just about any bread flour. Don't use all-purpose flour uh, for this. Uh, all-purpose flour has a lower protein content and the protein is what creates the, the, the two key proteins in uh, bread, in the starch, I'm sorry, the two key proteins in uh, flour are uh, glutenin and gliadin and the two combined make 
the structure that is part of uh, the bread that gives it, um, you know, that gives it those nice big airy holes that we really want to build. That's called the gluten, okay? So high protein flour has more of that and allows you to create more of that texture that we're going to go for uh, today. Uh, also, uh, for today's recipe, a little bit of whole wheat flour gives it an extra little bit of flavor. Today we're going to use um, rye flour, but if you don't have it, uh, use whatever whole wheat flour you've got. And if you don't have that, just go straight 100% white. It's going to be great anyway, okay? All right, let's get going. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, make a little bit of starter. Uh, this uh, extra step is a way to kind of get the fermentation process going and it's going to give extra flavor to the bread that you're that you're going to try to make the amazing thing about bread is that it basically has four ingredients it's got flour it's got water it's got yeast and it has salt and then the other magical ingredient that we often overlook is time time is what helps build the complexity of the flavors the bread we're going to make today is a quick bread it's only going to rise over about a four hour period, but by giving, by creating a little starter that starts a little bit earlier, that helps us build a little bit of that complexity uh, in this. When I make sourdoughs, often you allow those to rise for 24 hours in the, uh, at really cold temperatures. I put mine in, in the fridge. This is a quick bread. Um, I'm gonna show you the timeline shortly, but basically if you start at nine in the morning, with uh, the process, like you've got nothing, you're just assembling your ingredients together. If you start at nine in the morning, you're gonna have bread that's ready to eat by six at night. So very easy to do on the weekend. Um, you're studying, you know, you're, you know, you're watching a movie or something like that. You have to break uh, in between, you know, during commercials or something, you can come over and tend to your bread. It's a great weekend bread and uh, you're gonna love it. The other thing, nice thing about this particular bread is that it's, uh, it can double as pizza dough very uh, readily, like a focaccia dough. So, you know, you could be, uh, you could use it for a variety of things. Today, we're gonna make it as bread. The other thing I'm gonna do in today's recipe is we're gonna do it by hand. Most of you might not have like a big stand mixer. Those can be a little expensive. If you have one, that's fantastic. But we're gonna do it all by hand. So everything pretty much that you see here uh, is what you're gonna need. Of course, you're gonna need an oven to, to bake it in. To make the starter, what you're gonna need is a container, simple uh, container. What you're gonna do is you're gonna add uh, water and flour in equal parts and a half a teaspoon of that dry yeast. You're gonna mix it together so that, it, uh, so that all the wet bits are mixed up. You're gonna put a lid on it and you're just gonna wait. After about four hours, it's gonna look something like this, okay? So mine started here at nine in the morning, and by one in the afternoon, it had doubled, maybe even tripled in size. This is the nice part about this kind of bread is that it works, um, you know, almost uh, every time with the, with the freeze-dried yeast. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a pre-soak in the bread-breaking parlance. This is called an autolise. It allows the gluten to start to solubilize out of the flour and start to create those, uh, those sheets that we're gonna be looking for. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our bowl. Okay, so the dough, the, this initial soak has, uh, 
uh, the water has absorbed into the flour like this. We're gonna put a piece of plastic over it. I just use leftover grocery bags, like this. And we're just gonna let it sit for 30 minutes. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes for the auto leaves. I'm gonna take the plastic wrap off uh, here. Doesn't look all that different. Um, and the next step is to add the starter that we've made and it's been rising again for about four hours. A little extra of the uh, dried yeast and the salt that we've uh, measured out. And when all those things come together, then we're gonna start the next phase of the, um, of the bread process, which is called the bulk rise, all right? So we'll start by putting our dough back on here on our scale, zeroing things out, and we're gonna add 300 grams of starter. Now we're gonna be working with a really wet dough. This is gonna be a bit daunting. Um, the key to not having it stick and get completely messy is to get your hands wet. You could use this with a, like a squirt bottle or something. I just run mine under the sink. My hands are still wet. Now I found that it doesn't quite... Uh, grams oh, right on the money like that I'm gonna spread this out over the dough that's there I'm gonna poke it in with my fingers like that I'm gonna fold this over itself to try to get it covered up just going from the outside in like that all right and once that's happened I'm gonna slosh my yeast around. I'm gonna add it to my dough. Oh, this is really wet, okay? But don't worry, the, the whole process here is gonna, the, the water is gonna absorb into the dough and the gluten is gonna start to form. What I do is I actually squeeze it in like this, like I'm just chomping it down with, with my hands. Oh, that little bit of structure that was there to start with is, is pretty much gone at this point. This is really scary right now. Now I'm just gonna start working it and I like to work it from the bottom here. It's pretty well incorporated, the starter is um, you know evenly chopped up and what I do at this stage when it's really liquidy like this is once it's kind of come together the liquid is is kind of in there it's not puddling anymore I'm just gonna let it sit for another 15 minutes okay that's gonna help absorb a little bit of that really loose moisture into the into the flour So it's been about two or three minutes. You can start to lift this like this, fold it onto itself a little bit, starting to come together. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer it to this container here. And now we're gonna just let it be for 30 minutes. So we're now in the part of the rising uh, for the bread that's called the bulk rise. This will take, depending on the temperature, the temperature of the dough and the temperature of your room, this will take anywhere between three hours to five hours. Um, I added slightly warm water to this. My room is kind of cool today because it's, uh, uh, you know, it's the end of October right now. So we just got to play it by eye uh, a little bit. So I'm going to put it in here and for the first a uh, few hours, every 30 minutes, I'm going to work it and I'm gonna do a particular kind of fold, okay? 
there, cover it up so it doesn't dry out, and we'll come back to it. All right, let's take a look at what we've got. So this looks a bit scary. It's kind of flattened out like a pancake. We're gonna do what I refer to as a coil fold. So I'm gonna detach it from the front edge right here. I'm gonna get my hands around this side. I'm just kind of gonna get my fingers underneath. I'm gonna pull away and up, and it's gonna stretch it, and I'm gonna lay it down like that. Turn this 180 degrees. Do the same very gently here. I don't wanna be tearing anything. If it doesn't come out, then you kind of do it by hand. You can kind of go on. Now, 90 degrees, so I'm gonna do this side here. These should come out a little easier. Another. 180 degrees, and like that. So I've basically gone around every every side. Now we can take a look at how that gluten formation is starting to go. Yeah, it's a little bit better. It's still tearing a little bit, but that's okay. We're still at the beginning of this. What I might do is just do this again very quickly, like that. This very, since this is the first coil fold, you know, I might, I'll do it, you know, twice. Later on in the in the rise, I'm not gonna do it twice. So, good enough, all right. Let's cover it, and let's wait another 30 minutes. All right, we're at the, just about the four hour mark, and let's take a look. So we've done our turns, our folds. Oh yeah, so look at that. It's got a nice, it's got a nice rise. Right now it's looking pretty billowy. That's what you do. I'm gonna use my hands just to gently pull it it's away from the side. Yeah. a little bit. Now at this point you want to be really gentle in how you handle it. It's got all this wonderful air that's trapped inside and if you go manhandling it you're gonna lose all those beautiful holes that uh, that it could create. That air inside is what's gonna expand when you put it in the oven and create those create that texture, create that open crumb. So don't go over handling it right now, okay? So uh, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna turn this over like this. Take a little bit. Yeah, it'll come out. I think. Let's get this thing in. There we go. Just gotta be patient sometimes. All right. Beautiful. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do next. A little bit of uh, flour on the side. Get an abundant amount of flour here. And this is where your dough scraper is gonna come in really handy. I'm just gonna work the dough, work the flour just underneath. And it's important that this stuff, this part in here, is the interior part. So you don't wanna put flour in here because what we're gonna do is fold it. And if you put that raw flour inside like that, it's gonna turn out terrible and you're gonna get this big white layer of unfermented, you know, un um, leavened flour inside. So you do that, gently pull it over, like that. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. It's just like a baby's bottom. Okay, I'm just gonna work a little bit under here. And I'm gonna use my hands and the scraper to kind of help shape it. It's gonna be like this big fat log like this. I call it a chapata because it means a slipper. It's gonna be like slipper shape like this. All right. Beautiful. So I lied when I said that all the uh, all the hardware that you need uh, was at, was at the beginning. There's one other piece that is kind of important. That is a piece of parchment paper 
Um, you can buy this kind of stuff here, parchment paper. Don't get wax wrap. That's gonna be a mess. It's gonna melt in the oven, okay? I've got this permanent stuff like this. You could reuse it a bunch of times. It's really great, okay? So what I'm gonna do is dust this like this. And this is where you're gonna totally freak out because this is wet and hard to handle. What I'm gonna do is accordion in it like this and then stretch it out like that. Beauty. I'm heating up the oven right now, as hot as you can get it. 500, 475, 550 if you can. You can see the, uh, you can see the bubbles starting to form right here. The yeast is going crazy, exponential growth, lots of air, lots of carbon dioxide being produced. This is great. 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Again, depending on the temperature of your, um, of your room, it's gonna be ready to go. If it's really cool, maybe an hour, something like that. So I'm gonna take this bag in, very versatile bag. I'm just gonna put it on top like that, keep it down, you know, like that. We're gonna be good. All right, see you in an hour. So we've uh, done the uh, final rise here for this last 40 minutes, hour, whatever it is, pretty, pretty warm right now, and we're gonna bake it. So let's take a look at what we got. This might stick a little bit here. Plastic, just be very gentle with it when it comes off. If the, if the gluten has um, developed nicely, it's gonna stick more to itself than it will to other things. Um, this is, I could have avoided uh, this happening by having dusted the surface with a little bit of flour, but I forgot to do that. Anyway. Okay, that came off pretty, uh, pretty easily there. This is looking good. We're gonna do one final dusting. I have a little uh, tea strainer here. I'm gonna scoop like this. Sprinkle it on like that. Gives it a little bit of color. Prevents it from uh, getting overcooked. Now, if you've got a uh, peel, a uh, bakery, a pizza peel like this, this is when you wanna break it out and use it. If you don't have one, you can get creative. You could turn a um, baking sheet like this and very carefully slide it under. Make sure you get your hand underneath so that the whole thing doesn't flop off when you do it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in my oven, and in my oven, I've got some big uh, pizza stones. If you don't have pizza stones, no problem. Just put it on a cookie sheet, you know, lay, lay it down, and you could turn it this way or that way. If at this point, this is too big for you and you wanna break it up into, into half, when we were shaping it, you could have split it up into two. And then each one of these is actually big enough to go into a cast iron uh, pan and you could use that as your surface for, for baking. It turns out really well. And then you could use the other half to make a pizza uh, instead. So I've got the oven at as high as I can get it. I'm gonna get this out onto my uh, baking sheet, onto my uh, pizza peel, like this. All right. And there's one final trick. Uh, when I put it in there, you wanna keep the oven open the least amount possible. You don't want that heat to come out. That's also why those baking stones are gonna help. And the final trick to get a nice dark crust on this is to get steam in the oven. Almost all professional ovens have automatic steam injectors. The best that you can do to emulate this at home is to actually pour water into your oven. Now, you don't wanna pour it straight into the bottom of the oven. I put a, um, another baking sheet kind of like this, a small version of this down in the bottom and I pour water straight onto that. It creates a lot of steam very quickly and that's gonna help get that nice brown crust on this. All right, let's see how we go. Here we go. In we go. Slide it in neatly. Water. Close this puppy as quick as we can. And I'm gonna set the timer here for 50 minutes, but I'm gonna set another timer for 30 minutes just to check that it's not going too quick. And I might have to actually rotate it in there at about the you know midway midway point, 25, 30 minutes. We'll be back.
look at this closer. Just very carefully, just take this and rotate it. It's looking beautiful right now. Yeah, I'm just gonna let this go. Yeah, I might not take the full 50 minutes. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got. dark bake here. It's good underneath. Just gonna let it rest. I know it's gonna be tempting. You always hear, oh, I'm gonna eat the bread when it's nice and warm. Don't eat the bread when it's nice and warm. You gotta let it cool down at least a half an hour, preferably an hour. And there's some breads that actually get better even the day after. These are gonna be good in about an hour. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's been cooling on a rack. I had the patience to wait overnight just because that's the way it went. Let's see what it looks like now. You can hear that crackle of the crust. It's nice. Good, strong bake. Oh yeah, super nice. Holes like that. You should always smell your bread because that's how you can really tell what it's gonna taste like. A little buttery, there's a little tang to it, that's really nice. Nice thick crust, that's the steam that created that. Um, a good uh, bake inside, obviously you're not gonna have anything um, that looks uncooked, but you also notice that there's a little bit of shininess to this crumb. That's the gluten that gelatinizes during the baking process, and that's a sign of a good uh, gluten development. All right, time to eat. What it tastes like. That's just the way it's supposed to be. I hope you enjoy cooking it. Send me your pictures when you're done. I'm looking forward to hearing about it. <laughs>